on today's show. Is it actually good that the Mavericks missed out on Matisse Thibel because they have Josh Green? Australia's national team coach gives us some insight. We'll talk about the Australian team, Canadian team, and more FIBA on today's Locked on Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked on Mavericks. Locked on Mavericks. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show, making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, be an everydayer, subscribe, follow for free. Just search Locked On Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day. And to comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section who you think can win the FIBA World Cup. Let us know what your feelings are about Josh Green's game today. Let us know all your feelings in in the comment section below. If you want to support the show, text us. Get text alerts from us like today when the Mavericks officially released JaVale McGee. We sent out an alert so you don't have to be on Twitter. Subscribe to our subtext. Click the link in the description below or text the number in the description below as well. Lots of stuff happening the Mavericks release JaVale McGee officially that was announced by Sham Sharania uh the Mavericks then quickly afterwards followed up by announcing that he is officially gone I still believe that he's being his contract is being stretched although they did say that he's just you know they're just requesting waivers you know they're not going to announce some kind of cap machination even though that's interesting to us may not be interesting to the general public I guess that's why the Mavericks don't do that they don't do they don't announce contract terms when they announce a player is being signed. So I'm not really worried about that. We'll talk about Australia versus Japan, Australia, the Boomas get a win, go to the next round in group play. And so we'll talk about that. They'll likely play Slovenia. So Luca versus Josh green game is, is very likely Luca versus Josh green and Exum three Mavs in the same game. Gotta love it. Canada and Latvia, Canada gets a little bit of a scare in the first three quarters and then just blow out Latvia at the end. What? How did Dwight Powell do? We'll talk about that game a little bit later. But I want to start here. Josh Green, today, Australia has this game. They got to win. It's a must win for them in this group. If they lose, it'd be a massive, massive upset. Japan Japan beat Finland. Or Japan beat... Um, it would have been a massive, massive upset for them to uh, to not get out of this round. Who did Japan beat? J- yeah, Japan beat beat Finland. But everybody beat Finland. <laughs> they went zero and three in their group. And so Australia came in as the much better team. They should have already taken care of business in this and and gotten there, but they lost to Germany. And so they have to win this game in order to move on in the FIBA World Cup. This is the first round of group play. Again, we're covering because Josh Green is on the team. Dante Exum's on the team. We've covered a lot of Luka and Slovenia's games as well. You can check our episode yesterday about that. Check our, we have a, a playlist on YouTube with all the episodes on these international games as well. And so Josh Green's kind of gone on this, a little journey here with, with this national team, 22 years old. He was on the, the, the crew that won their first medal in Olympic play, uh, you know, a couple years ago, he was very young, didn't play a lot on this team. And all of a sudden now his role has really elevated. They wanted to start him. He's out with a couple of, uh, the, a couple of the preseason or exhibition, the friendlies, the preparation games, whatever you want to call them, with some elbow issues. Then he's out with like a, a an ankle injury. And so the idea was to start him. He was going to start over Matisse Thibel, start over Xavier Cook, start over Joe Ingles, start over you know Dante Exum, start over a lot of guys that have played in the NBA. Jack White, another guy that plays in the NBA. Dyson Daniels, another guy that plays in the NBA. He's starting over all of them at this point. And then those injuries kind of happen at the beginning and he gets taken out of the starting lineup. They put Matisse Thibel in there. Well, now here comes a must-win game. And Josh Green starts again because their coach, Brian Gorgian, really wanted to have that look. And he liked that look a lot better. And so he starts again. And Brian Gorgian is asked about that, about Josh Green starting and how he, what he thought about the look and all that. And his answer was really interesting because you talk about Josh Green, current Dallas Maverick, and he's comparing him to Matisse Thibel you know, f- former future Dallas Maverick who is not on the Mavericks, but they signed the offer sheet and he could have been a Maverick. And I found that very, very interesting to hear what he said, especially since he's coaching both these players and they are, you know, are two players that, you know, they, and in a game when they, they have to win, 
This is what Brian Gordon said. It was real. We talk about the culture of the team. Uh, the assistants are saying to me, these guys are, are locked in. They know what's at stake. I didn't have to do anything like I did during that timeout. There was none of that. Um, no emotion from me. I did that yesterday. Um, and we, we, changed, we moved Matisse to the, the, the group coming off the bench. And, you know, Josh, this was the original plan. Um, but Josh missed most of Cannes, our camp, missed all the games. And um, I think he's better um, on the defensive end of the Delhi job of picking the ball up and putting pressure off, off the floor. And then when we bring in the switching lineup, Matisse is long, and he's playing with Xavier and Giddy in that group, and he can switch. So I thought the adjustment today um, really helped us. We got a lot from the group we started, and then the switching group was up a level. So this is the national team coach in a game that they got to, that they have to win in you know international play they don't prioritize development. This is not a play like in the NBA where you go, "Well, let's get the young guys playing. Let's get Josh Green who's younger than Matisse Thybul. Let's get him some experience." They're not doing that. There are younger guys that should probably be on some of these teams, but they're not going to be because they're not trying to develop. They're trying to win right now. These international teams and international leagues in general prioritize older players or you know experienced players and put in like play them more there's the, the exceptions Josh Giddy is 20 he's starting on this Australia team Luka Doncic is you know was starting on this Slovenia team since you know the beginning and so but you look at this and so this coach has no reason other than you know what's better basketball wise to make this decision he's not going to the Mavericks and being like well you know we should play him a little bit more, right? Should we get him to develop Josh Green? He's not doing that. He's looking at the strict X's and O's, looking at what's better for his team. And for him to say Josh Green is a better option in the Delhi role, he's talking about Matthew Della Vadova. Remember him? He went to the hospital after he guarded Steph Curry and almost died because, like, literally almost died because he was guarding Steph Curry on the ball so hard in the finals with the Cavs. Matthew Della Vadova is really good on ball defender. And he's saying that Josh Green is better in that role than Matisse Thibel is. Well, what do the Dallas Mavericks need? How much have we talked about can Josh Green be the on-ball defender that they really, really need? How much have we talked about, you know, Josh the Mavericks need point of attack defenders? Can Josh Green be that? Can he step up? Reggie Bullock's gone. They replaced him with Grant Williams. Well, Grant Williams is not that great of a point of attack defender, but Josh Green's got to step up in that role. And now here he is on an international stage with, t- with a team that wants to win. And Matisse Thibel, who was almost a direct comparison to Josh Green because they were almost on the same team. And so now I wonder the question, is it better that the Mavericks you know, let Matisse Thibel go? It, obviously, it would be better for them to just have the talent and to have him on the team. But to allow Josh Green to thrive, to grow into his role. Josh Green is a player that this international coach, you know, Brian Gorgian, thinks is very highly of. Better, better on-ball defender, and that's what the Mavericks need. Matisse Thibel, I think, if I'm just going to say what I think on this, I think Matisse Thibel is better as a wing defender. I think he's better in, you know, uh, like a, he's better playing passing lanes. I think he's better, he's, he's longer, he's got a bigger wingspan. Like, he, I think he's better at that. But the, the job of chasing guys around, which is what you need to do in the NBA, the job of chasing around screens and, you know, what Reggie Bullock has done for the Mavericks the last couple of years, the chasing guys around and things like that, Josh Green could be better for the Mavericks. That's just on defense. Let's do that. Then save the fact that Josh Green is a better offensive player. Scored 15 points in this game. He's hit some threes. His three-point shot looks really good. Now, we've seen Matisse Thibel hit five threes in one of these FIBA games, but he's not a three-point shooter. They're not looking to him to do that. Josh Green hit a couple threes in this game. He's also got the passing game. He's definitely a better passer than Matisse Thibel. We didn't see a lot of that. We haven't seen a lot of that with Australia, but we have seen it for the Mavericks. He can handle the ball a little bit. What this quote that came out a couple, you know, before last year. People forget about Frank. Mm. When we asked about a third ball handler, Josh Green's name was the first one to come up. He's a hundred percent a better offensive player. And so if he can give the Mavericks what they need more defensively, and he can be better as an offensive option, plus without Matisse Thibel, now you have room for Omax to to get some some minutes. And that's what we all want. For the Dallas Mavericks, for him to develop, for him to get some minutes, he's going to be a better offensive option than Thibel as well. And so now you wonder the question, was it good that the Mavericks lost out on Josh Green or on Matisse Thibel a little? 
there's some positives. I'm I'm painting I'm I'm painting with a a very positive brush right now. But I think that that quote was very interesting to me to hear a hear a coach talk that highly about Josh Green and to say that he would rather have Josh Green on ball defending than Matisse Thibel. Good stuff. Good stuff. Coming up, let's get into Australia versus Japan. How did Australia win this game? What did Dante Exum do in this game? And then what's next for Australia? We'll talk about all that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel has you covered for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel's America's uh, number one sports book right now. New customers can bet $5. So if you've never bet on FanDuel before, it's the time right now because, listen to this, new customers can get, uh, they bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. So you're like, well, I want to bet, but I don't want to bet a lot. I just want to play around with it. Okay, bet five bucks. You get 200. Then you can play around with it all you want. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket. That's everybody. So if you have bet on, on FanDuel before, bet $5 and get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Go check it out. They have FIBA stuff. So if you're interested in FIBA stuff, and you don't want to bet on anything NFL yet. You're like, oh, I just I don't wait for the games to happen. Wait for the end of the you know the 53 man rosters and all that. And so you can go to FIBA. They have all this stuff. They have actually Slovenia against Cape Verde. Their game by the time you're listening to this, that may, that game may have already happened. Slovenia is a 26 and a half point favorite. You can go check that out. Check out everything else that they have, and uh, go check out FanDuel.com/slash locked on. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, being an everydayer. We appreciate each and every one of you. All right, Isaac, let's talk about this Australia versus Japan game. Australia wins it 109 to 89. They win it by 20. And honestly, this game was just over from almost the, the, the start. <laughs> Australia was just bigger, better. Uh, and got every, like, they dominated in all aspects of the game. Here's the number that stands out the most to me. Points in the paint, 68 for Australia. These are 40-minute games. 68 of their 109 points were in the paint. That means they only scored 31 points. 31 points. Wait, 31? 41 points out of, the, out of the paint. 68 in the paint, 41 out of the paint. Crazy. Japan scored 34 points in the paint. Half. They got doubled up in the paint. It was just one of those games. Like Australia is a very, very talented team. Almost their entire lineup, their entire rotation plays in an NBA uh, capacity, except for Nick K and Duop Brief, who are their two starters. We've got a lot of NBA players. On the Japan side, Yuta Wananabe is on the Suns now. He plays in the NBA. You've got our boy uh, Yudi Baba, who was on the Mavs uh, training camp roster a couple years ago. You've got uh, guy Josh Josh Hawkinson, who played college for a little while. He had 33 points in this game, in this game. He's leading in you know FIBA and rebounding and all that. But you don't have a lot of NBA talent on this on this Japan team. And Australia went in there. They had to win this game. They just took it over from the beginning. Right at the beginning of the game, about two minutes in, Josh Green gets a catch and, catch and shoot three-point shot and an and one. <laughs> Fouled on the three, hits the free throw, and Australia's up eight to two at that point. It just felt like from the very beginning, Australia, everything was just going to go Australia's way. Josh, What we saw from Josh Green in this one, again, 15 points, three rebounds, four steals. He was plus nine in this game. He played 22 minutes. He started the game. Really good game from him overall. He took advantage of... You know, the, the, like the ball watching, he took advantage of everybody trying to watch Patty Mills, everybody trying to watch uh, Josh Giddy. He took advantage of all of that. He took advantage of all of the, the offensive rebounds. They got. Australia got 19 offensive rebounds in a 40-minute game. Japan had 12, but 19 is, is, so, is so many. Uh, uh, Australia also had 44 total rebounds. Japan only had 33 in this one. But Josh Green took advantage of all that. And he's really playing this role. It's an even more truncated, I guess is the word. It's an even more defined role on offense that he's just standing in the corner. And if every once in a while he cuts, every once in a while he's got the ball and passes, but even more so than what he does with the Mavericks. He's hanging out in the corner. I saw a couple of people on Reddit even complain, man, I wish they would let him handle the ball a little bit more to develop. 
back to my original point earlier, this is not a developmental situation. They're trying to win these games. They're doing what's best for them to win. They don't care about developing Josh Green for even the future of the Boomers, like the Australian team. They're not even worried about that. They're trying to win these games right now. That's what it's all about. But Josh Green had a really good game. This is one where if you were worried about Josh Green and worried about some of his games before, look at this one and watch this game because you just saw his impact all over the place. His defense, his on-ball defense in this game. Anytime they needed to stop, they put Josh Green on the ball and he was navigating through screens and doing all that. He had four steals in this game. A couple of them were just on the ball, just guarding, just guarding a guy and in front of him, he just slapped the ball away and got the ball. He had another, you know, a couple other deflections where he just read the play really, really well. And this is the next thing for Josh Green. I got a couple of people in the subtext that text us and ask, you know, what's what's next for Josh Green? Or they ask, why is Josh, why do you think, you know, certain players are better defensively and what can Josh Green be? The answer, to, the answer for me is like older players are usually better defensively, at least like not old players, but older players, because it takes some knowledge to be good at defense. You have to know coverages. Like you have to know, what you're doing. You have to know offense really well to know and try to predict what the team is going to do. You don't think Draymond Green knows what teams are going to run. You don't think some of these guys know what teams are going to run or know what's going to happen next or can read a guy's body language and can read what they're going to do in a play and can anticipate it. They're not just all instinct. Like they're not just all trying to, you know, this is, it's, it's very different playing this, this organized basketball than it is like a pickup game. If like you and I went out and played. I'm just going on instinct. I have no idea what you're going to do because I don't know your game. I don't know anything about you. But these guys, they've seen some, They've seen these players. They know what's going to happen next a lot of the time. And for Josh Green, that's part of the development. He's 22. He's got to learn about how to defend. He's got to learn how to, you know, to be better instinctively. And I think that's something that he's really learning, seeing some of these plays. Two, two, two steals specifically. He had one where, you know, in the third quarter, seven minutes left, he played really good on ball defense and then a screen came. And so then he's kind of chasing and trying to, trying to catch up to the ball handler. And then he gets a deflection off of a, you know, a pass. He sees the, you know, he's watching the ball handler. He's also watching the other player that was involved in the screen. And then he gets a deflection because he read the play perfectly. Just a great, a great look at how he's being more, you know, uh, his IQ on defense is getting better. Uh, six, about seven minutes left in the second quarter. He had another one where he's off the ball. He's not defending on the ball, but he's off the ball and he sees an opportunity, really good dig where he goes over, he pokes the ball away, gets a steal, and then gets an and one in transition. That's the stuff. Like, oh, that's the stuff right there. You gotta love that. Uh, Dante Exum in this game, he had, what, five points, four rebounds, two assists. He was plus five in the game, played 21 minutes. He's just playing his role. Third got third ball handler off the bench. He's coming in, defending a little bit. He hit, uh, what did he hit? He hit a three in this game and then had, you know, got to the free throw line and hit a couple other free, it hit two free throws. And so that's where his five points came from. He had two really good assists to Josh Giddy where he's reading the play on offense. That's the stuff too that you you want because if you're looking for a third ball handler on the Mavericks, you want a guy that can read some stuff, that can run a pick and roll. And Dante Exum's doing that. He's running pick and roll on this you know, on this uh, Australia team. And that's what they really want him to do. And that's what he is doing in this. So just a dominating win by Australia. Just from the jump, I mean, what they they started the game up 14 to six. <laughs> that, was, that was the first half of the first quarter. They're up 14 to six. They really never looked back in this one. It built up lead. Japan would come back. And by the way, this game was in Okinawa. This game was in Japan. So they're <laughs> like, there's, it's what, what was it? Like 90%. Japanese fans, at least whenever they showed the crowd or when you could hear the crowd. And so they're playing, a, they're playing an away game. Australia, technically the home team in this one, but they're playing an away game. Coming up, let's talk about what's next for Australia. Who do they play next in the next round? And then let's talk about Canada and Dwight Powell playing Latvia. That was a little scary. A little scary there for a minute. We'll talk about why. Coming up. If you don't believe you shouldn't be here. All right, Isaac, let's get into the rest of this. Let's talk about where Australia goes next. So they win this. They're second in their group. Now we know they're moving on. They're, they're second in their group. They finished two and one in their first group play. And so them and Germany are going to move on. They move on to group K. Everybody plays in a group in the first round. And then they move on to the second round. And it's another group. And so now they're in group K. Germany, Australia, and 
Slovenia, probably, by the time you're listening to this, you may know this already by now, but Slovenia is probably going to be that other team in there. And then the fourth team in this is likely going to be Georgia. If Cape Verde beats Slovenia and only beats them by, like, beats them by a certain amount, then it could be Cape Verde and Slovenia, but we'll see. I mean, we'll, see we'll see what happens in that one. But likely going to be Slovenia and Georgia in that one. And so we are going to see... Slovenia versus Germany, Slovenia versus Australia, and those are going to be really big tests for Slovenia and or Luka. But now Australia will play Slovenia, and that's going to be a a pretty interesting test to them to try and keep Slovenia off the three-point line. And then they're going to play Georgia, and that'll be interesting because Australia doesn't have the best interior defense. Nick K, Duop Reith, Xavier Cooks, those are kind of their bigs. And they're not the biggest guys. They're not the best rim protectors. They're not the best guys out there. They're not Rudy Gobert, even though Rudy Gobert wasn't really Rudy Gobert in this tournament. But like they they really have struggled with teams that post up a lot. And Georgia is one of those teams that likes to post up a ton. They've got a bunch of guys that are just big and in the paint. And so that's going to be a really interesting test for Australia, this next group K. And so that's what's next for them. I'm interested to see that group. That Australia-Slovenia game is must-watch. Um... Yeah, that, that's just gonna that's gonna be amazing, and so then, you know, we'll see the two teams that get out of this group, and it, it's a toss up for me between Australia and Slovenia because Luca can just dominate. He's not gonna be worried about any of those defenders out there because Josh Green's smaller. He's the one that that's better on the ball. Matisse Thybul is even smaller for Luca, and so like who are you gonna who are you gonna throw on him? You can try Xavier Cooks on him. He's he's about same size as Luca. That one might work for a little bit, but Luca's quicker than him. He's going to take advantage of him. And so that's going to be a must watch game. I'm really interested to see how that one works out. And now let's talk about Canada. Oh, Canada. This team is so good. And so to see them in this game against Latvia, who Latvia is the one that, that beat France and essentially knocked them out because France was the team. France was the team that, uh, you know, lost their first two games. And when you lose your first two games, you're just kind of out of it. Like, that's just, it's kind of it. And so Latvia is the one that knocked them off. So they were kind of a little bit of a surprise. They don't have Porzingis on this. He was there. He was in the, he was in the crowd. They showed him. But they do have Davis Bertans. They do have uh, his brother who did not play in this game. And so the back of Davis Bertans' jersey says Davis on it instead of Bertans, which I found funny. Uh, Rodion's Kuruks used to play for the Nets. He's on this team. He played a ton in this one. And then I think that's, those are the only NBA players that you'd recognize. Could be wrong on that, but I think, I think those are the only ones. And so, but this Latvia team is a lot like what you'd think a Porzingis Davis Bertans team would be like, they're taking a bunch of threes and they got hot pretty early. They were just chucking up threes. They hit five of 10 threes in the first quarter. And in the first quarter, they're up 23 to 13. Canada was down by 10 to Latvia in this game. Now I don't think Canada needed this game to win. They already won their first two games and nobody else in their, their group had won two games, obviously. So, uh, because Latvia is the other team that won two games. They didn't necessarily need this game. So this was like a must win game. So maybe they came out and were like, ah, oh, we don't really need this. We'll see what happens. And so you get this, you know, really good Latvia quarter where they're hitting a bunch of threes. They're playing really well in transition too. I thought Latvia was really getting up and down and stopping Canada. Canada is a great defense. They've got Dylan Brooks, you got Kelly Olynyk back there. You have RJ Barrett on the wings, SGA, you know, as one of the guard defenders. Uh, you just got some really good defense there. The other, the other start, there are the starters, Dwight Powell. And he's you know, in his position, playing good positional defense. And so they turn a lot of turnovers into offense. And Latvia wasn't letting them get any of that. They also weren't, weren't letting them turn the ball over that much. They also weren't you know, missing a bunch of shots. And so Canada, and then on offense, Canada was just driving into players. Latvia played really good vertical defense at the rim, and Canada was just running into guys. They were just trying to drive and drive and drive, and it just wasn't working, and they weren't really fouling that much either at the rim. And so they really took advantage of that. And you really had this, you know, three quarters of, almost three quarters, three, like two and, two and like, I don't know, (laughs) what was, four fifths of a quarter? Because Canada was only up by one with three minutes left in the third quarter. This is a team that everybody thinks can win the whole thing. You go to, you go to FanDuel right now, and they're number two. It's, it's USA minus 140, Canada plus 360. And so they're right behind, and then Spain is plus 1,200. So think about how, how much they think of Canada 
in just that. And so you have this team that's supposed to be this dominant, really good, you know, second best team in the whole thing outside of the U.S. And they're only up by one to Latvia in, like, at the end of the third quarter. So it's kind of one of those things where, okay, what's happening? What's, what's going on in this game? Latvia was playing a really sound game. They didn't even hit that many threes late. They were just playing a sound game. They didn't foul too much. You had, um, you know, some good, some good defensive plays. They found a way to get buckets. And then all of a sudden, end of the third quarter, SGA woke up. SGA took over. He scored 27 in this one. He had 27, six boards, six assists. And again, this is 27 in, he played just 31 minutes in this one. So he, this is an efficient, he's going out there. Nobody could stop him. He found ways. And one of the things I think that Latvia or that Canada found in this is they took out Dwight Powell. He played 21 minutes and then Kelly Lennon played 29. The rest of their starters kind of played 30 as well. And they put in more shooting. They played Nikhil Alexander Walker instead of Dwight Powell. Nikhil Alexander Walker took 11 threes in this one. They really wanted to space the floor and they spaced the floor against Latvia's defense. And that's when they really started getting going. It wasn't really their defense. It was their offense. Now their defense did eventually show up. Um, in the, I thought in the third quarter, their defense woke up. They stopped allowing Latvia to get easy buckets. They stopped allowing them to take, take as many threes. What did they finish with? Yeah. 10 of 36, not a, not a ton of threes. It's a lot of threes for a FIBA game, but not, not a ton. Uh, what do we see? Is it Venezuela or one of the teams yesterday took 42 or something like that. And so Canada really took over in that way. Dwight Powell in this one. Kind of, kind of got played off the floor a little bit, you know, just stylistically. They wanted to space the floor a little more, and so they played Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek was very good in this game. But Dwight finished with six points, five rebounds. He, he, he had four fouls, two turnovers. It was only a plus five in this game that they won and just played, you know, played 21 minutes still, but had a decent impact, but they uh, schematically, they went a, they went a different direction. And so they decided to do that. Now, what's next for Canada? They're in Group L now. So it's them and Latvia. Those are the top two teams. And then Spain is probably going to be in their group. And then Brazil is likely to be in their group as well. We still have to wait for the games on Wednesday to hear about that. But Canada is going to get out of that group too. Them and Spain, that's going to be a really good match. I'm, I'm really excited to see that one. That one I'm definitely going to watch. We'll cover them here. We'll cover Canada. We'll keep covering Australia and Slovenia as well. You can check on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out. Boom!